How much faster is the 16 GB RAM 512 GB SSD M2 MacBook Pro compared to the base 8 GB model that has 256 gigs of storage? Because in our previous video, we showed off that the SSD in this brand new M2 MacBook is half the speed of the previous generation and that definitely affects it once you have some applications open and browser tabs like a lot of people use their computers. Well today we are going to find out not only what standard benchmarks and real world tasks when you don't have much open just a single app but also when you do open up all those browser tabs and you might have Photoshop and Lightroom open at the same time. Well let's find out. Starting out with our Blackmagic disk speed test here, our 512 gigabyte model scores almost twice as fast for both our write speed and for the read speed. And that is because the 256 gig model only has one NAND storage chip instead of two, like it used to have with the M1 MacBook Pro that launched a year and a half ago. And this can make a difference not only if your laptop is using the SSD as extra RAM for swap, which it does, but also for trying to transfer files to and from your laptop. It took just nine and a half seconds for me to transfer a small 22 and a half gigabyte file with the 512 model compared to 28 seconds with the base M2. And imagine if you're transferring hundreds of gigs like we typically do for our video projects. Now let's see the difference between Geekbench Performance, which runs about 30 different tasks. And as you guys can see, the performance is basically identical. In fact, the eight gig got a slight slightly higher multi-core score, but it'll be interesting to run this again once we have a few applications and some web browser tabs open. And now let's run Speedometer 2.0 to see the responsiveness of the systems for web browsing and a lot of web-based applications. And as you guys could see, we have pretty much the same score, an absolutely amazing highest score I've ever seen. And we'll also run this again when we have some other apps open. But before I do that, let's run a few more real world tests with applications that do use a decent amount of RAM, for example, photo editing. Here I have Lightroom Classic opened up with 50 raw images and shifting between these, so far with just Lightroom open, I'm not seeing any differences at all. Both are very smooth. But let's see what happens when we export these 50 images. Wow, our 16 gig M2 is flying. And if we take a look at our activity monitor, we are using three gigs of swap already on the eight gig model, with just 50 of these images being exported. When I was a wedding photographer, we would export 1,500, 2,000 images, compared to zero swap used on the 16 gig model, allowing it to go so fast. Bam, it is done. That is an incredible uh, time for exporting this. Let's wait on the eight gig model. Wow, guys, I cannot believe the difference here because all we have open is Lightroom and our activity monitor. There's nothing open in Safari here. Um, man, okay. The M2 took two minutes flat. That is the best time we got on it, two minutes flat. Take a guess down below how fast the M2 with 16 gigs took. I wanna hear your guys' opinions. All right, it took one minute and seven seconds. Yes, almost twice as fast. And we will run this again when we have some web browsing tasks open. I mean, I am just shocked. I'm closing down Lightroom, so we're just gonna have one pro app open at a time. And now let's run our Xcode benchmark for you computer programmers. So we're running the benchmark, our CPU is maxed out, and it looks like for this test, we're actually not using that much RAM. We only have 550 gigs in swap on the eight gig model and just over four gigs actually used. Our 16 gig model is using almost seven gigs with zero swap, so it means it has a little bit more room to breathe. And it looks like the difference is negligible when we don't have anything else open. We have 119.6 seconds versus 120.6 seconds. But of course, if you're coding, you're probably gonna have some web browser tabs open. 
you're definitely gonna have some. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I have 10 tabs open, which is completely normal for most people, especially if you're doing coding. Oftentimes we have more than that. I have my Google Drive open, some sheets, some analytics. I have a YouTube video playing in the background. I have some websites over here as well. And let's run our benchmark again. And now we are using more swap on the 8 gig model than before, but still not that much. And I'm not sure if running the benchmark through terminal uses less RAM than having Xcode open, uh, but you guys let me know if you guys know that. All right, we have our results and the 16 gig model actually ran faster this time. 118.2 seconds, whereas the 8 gig model did slow down 125.7 seconds. And keep in mind, we don't have Xcode running here and we only have 10 web browsing tabs open, nothing else. So you could expect Xcode being even slower if you had to have other programs open, virtual machines, anything else that supports coding or more tabs in your browser. And now let's test out video editing. I have a simple five minute 4K project here with a few LUTs applied. This is something that most YouTubers do. There is a load on the graphics, but it's not too heavy. And as far as playback, we're not seeing a big difference. Now let's go ahead and check our activity monitor while we're playing this back. And as you guys could see with those 10 tabs open, uh, we're still not using very much swap just having the short five minute project open. And now let's go ahead and export this five minute project. All right, wow, this one started up right away. It is already at 20% compared to eight over here with the eight gig model. And that makes sense because the eight gig model is using four and a half gigs of swap. It's actually going up compared to zero swap on the 16 gig. Now, I was a big proponent when the M1s came out, the swap isn't that big of a deal. The SSDs last way longer now, it is super speedy, the responsiveness difference was minimal back then, and the machine, even the eight gig, for a lot of people, most people, it worked great. This time around, I have to change my stance, not on swap in general, but on this machine using swap because now it just slows down so much, which did not happen with the M1 MacBook Pro. And people talk about before SSDs were quite a bit slower with the Intel models, but the CPU and GPU in the Intel models were way slower anyways. So they were the limitation, not the SSD itself, but now with this fast M2 chip, this SSD and the amount of RAM is slowing it down. The 16 gig model took two minutes and 22 seconds to export this five minute project very quick, but the eight gig one took four minutes and 45 seconds. That's twice as long. Now, if you remember previously, when we just had Final Cut open, no web browsing tabs at all, it took two minutes and 23 seconds. So that is how much of an impact we are getting when we have just our 10 tabs open over here, regular use, no other applications, no Photoshop, nothing else, and you start exporting and getting into that swap with the SSDs being that speed. At this point, the fanless M1 MacBook Air that you could buy for as low as 850 bucks on Amazon, we'll put links down below, will be faster than this brand new M2 equipped machine. Let that sink in. Now, when I'm working with Final Cut, I often have Photoshop open as well, and oftentimes more tabs than what I have on this machine right now. So let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. I'm gonna drag in these nine images, and we are gonna do an HDR photo compilation. The 16 gigabyte model took 13 seconds to do this very fast, but the eight gigabyte model, go ahead and take a guess down below how long it took. It took 40 seconds, basically three times longer. Now at this point, our 16 gig model is also starting to use the SSD as RAM. We have two gigs of swap used, but it doesn't matter because the SSDs are really quick and it's not limiting the performance. Whereas the eight gig is using six gigs of swap and you saw how much it slowed down because of that. And then we're creating the final file here. Our 16 gig took 10 seconds versus 30 for the eight gig model. Now, what I wanna do is go ahead and run speedometer 
And you guys are seeing even just typing is kind of glitching up, which is so weird for a brand new machine in 2022. Looks like both of them did slow down. We have 326 for the 16 gig and 299 for the 8 gig. But it's also interesting that this plus and minus 33 means that it's not being very consistent. Sometimes things load quick, sometimes they'll be quite slow. But let's see the responsiveness of the system. I'm gonna go back through these tabs. 16 gigs perfectly quick. Seems like a brand new computer it should be. Come on. It's not even letting me click here. So even though speedometer is showing that there's not much difference, I mean, we could see ourselves how much of a difference we have here. And Google Drives had to pull from swap. Let's go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro much quicker. Now let's open up Photoshop here, check these files. Instant here, we're waiting, I don't know, was that four seconds for that one? The whole system, as you guys can see, is glitching up here. Come on, let me, <laughs> let me do something. Now there are a lot of apologists online saying, you know what, it's fine, the SSD doesn't make a difference. Even some reviewers saying that, well, make sure to send them this video because we are not doing some extreme benchmarks. We are doing simple things on this system. We're not pushing it hard. I pushed the M1 MacBook Air way harder than this before it started to slow down. This is real world use, not some fake thing just to get these crazy headlines, which some people are saying. Now let's go ahead and close down Final Cut Pro. I was gonna do some tougher tests, uh, but as you see, the menu bars doesn't even wanna pop open here. Uh, I can't, I don't even wanna touch any ProRes footage or raw footage or anything. We just did the basic stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Lightroom. We did that test in the beginning when we only had Lightroom open. Let's see what it runs at now with just Photoshop with nine images open in Lightroom. Actually, let's test how fast these open, how responsive the systems are. So that was, I don't know, three seconds? And twice as slow, maybe even a little bit slower than that. Let's go ahead and flip through these images. Pretty sure I hit that. It still hasn't changed. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Bam, it switched there. I don't know how long that was. Maybe Angelica could put the time there. Uh, that is crazy. Okay. Is this not real world? Do people not buy a MacBook Pro? to be able to have Photoshop open with some images there, not a crazy amount, not a crazy amount of layers, compositions, and then have 50 images open in Lightroom with 10 web browsing tabs open. I think that's fairly normal. It would not be this bad before. My goodness, this is worse than I expected. I don't even wanna try a brush, but let's try to brush the sky. All right, I did the brush stroke. I'm not seeing anything. Let's do another brush stroke. All right, we got the beach ball. Oh, it skipped the first portion. All right, there you go. Now that's a little bit better. Our 16 gig one, super smooth, no issues. Let's change our exposure down. Look at that, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so let's just go ahead and export these 50 images. And while we're doing that, let's just go ahead and jump back into Photoshop Say we want to go ahead and remove some spots from an image. Let's see how responsive this is. Before that image even loads, I'm gonna go through all these images and see how many times I can loop it. Oh my goodness, we're on the third loop so far. <laughs> okay, it switched, we still got a beach ball. There you go, all right, well, you know what? Let's get out of Photoshop. Let's go back into Google Chrome. I'm oftentimes, you're multitasking. Something's exporting. You know, you're gonna go in, you're gonna do some web browsing, you're gonna write some emails. Here, we're loaded up already. Oh wow, okay. I missed this actually getting done. That was super quick. I presume it was the same time as before. I mean, I looked down, it was very close. Uh, we are using swap here. My goodness, we're using 12 gigs of swap. That is a lot. 
But you guys are seeing how fast it just exported that. And you know, I'll probably just run it again. And here our whole system's locked up. Okay, there you go. Let's go back to Lightroom. And that's how far we've gotten. All right, let's look at our activity monitor. Yeah, here we're using 13.59 uh, gigs of swap. Oh, we're up to 14 gigs of swap now. We'll export this one one more time and stop right there. One minute and 19 seconds. I think it was a minute and seven the first time. And that's running with all of that open using the swap. We ran it the first time, we waited, then I ran it a second time and look at our 8 gig model. That is how far it's gotten so far. So, so far it's at, I don't know, six minutes or so, or seven. It's gonna take another 20 minutes to finish. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that if I can. It's being way too stuttery. I'm gonna run Geekbench 5 one more time. And here are the results. The 16 gig slowed down by about 200 in the multi-core and then a little bit in the single core, whereas the 8 gig model, it is close to now an M1 chip. But benchmarks don't tell the whole story. People online are saying the SSDs don't matter. That only shows up in benchmarks. No, you guys saw for yourselves how the systems compare in real world use and not even pushing them that hard. I would push them harder on a day-to-day -day basis and I push my M1 MacBook Air harder than this, which is why you know we're doing these real world tests for you guys. Now, my verdict is that Apple should not be selling the M2 MacBook Pro with this SSD with the eight gig model. A lot of people say, hey, it's 2022, we should not have an eight gig laptop as a pro laptop. Um, I agree or with that, the RAM. But when you combine eight gigs and the slow RAM, that's half the speed as it was a year and a half ago with the M1 Mac Pro and Air, you get this disastrous result. So please do not buy one of these. And for the people out there that say, well, pros would never buy a base model, Apple said this is the number two best-selling laptop. And guess which spec sells by far the most? The base spec, the one that is kept in stock everywhere. That was the one that is discounted, that's the one that people buy, and I know many people that have base spec M1s that perform very well and they are very happy with it and they didn't need to go upgrade a bunch of stuff. They're using it just like this for creative work. So you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Share this video with other people that are commenting, that are talking about that this doesn't matter, that we're blowing it at proportion. You guys saw the proof for yourselves. Click that circle above to subscribe. If you guys appreciate this type of testing and reporting, check out one of those great videos right there. This is Max and I'll see you in the next video.